Hey everyone, welcome back to Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. Today I'll be chatting with KK Smith and our segment is going to be on authorship, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome KK, please tell us who you are and where you're located. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your show, Genesis. I'm so excited to talk about gems of authorship. So I'm KK Smith. I'm an entrepreneur for almost three decades. I'm an author. I'm a podcast host. I'm a digital strategist, speaker, and also a one-on-one -on -one coach helping people overcome limiting beliefs and pivot into their passions. Wow, that is a lot of things, which means you're very versatile, well-rounded, and you are definitely a go-getter. So I know you have a lot of things that are brewing. So I want you to tell the listeners, as well as the viewers, what is your failure story that led you to where you are now? And how did your failure help you unravel your unending constantly going a success that you have now okay so my story began so long ago so almost all of my life really but really around 30 years ago so my son will be 30 next week so when I had him I was in college I was an aspiring news anchor I really want to be a news anchor and so with this dream I had this dream ever since I was little and I went to college and I got pregnant my first year in college so after my first year in college my life just completely fell apart now this has been 30 years ago um I became homeless I became um desolate bad relationships um I just had so many life experiences that led me just to get back up again and keep getting back up again. So that's my platform. So my platform is in my podcast, Mom Stuff Coffee Shop, is helping people to get back up again and knowing that you can get back up again, no matter what happens in your life. And this has been my story. And that was the pivoting moment of starting my book, of writing my book. And what is the title of your book, if you feel inclined to share it, or is it still just wrapped up until you get ready to just put it out there? Well, here's my book here. It's called Awakening Unleashed. Mm. Um, it's available in Amazon, on Amazon Kindle. Um, it's also available soon on audio. But this book is about accessing the sleeping giant. Sometimes when things happen in life, we fall asleep. Life forces us to fall asleep in different areas. So we stop trying. We follow behind the status quo. We just go to sleep in so many areas. So we could be sleepwalking. This is the basis of this book. We could be literally following someone else's agenda because we do not have the clarity on the inside. So this book is about self-clarity to live your best life, un uncovering what's really underneath of all the things that we've gone through and coming out with an amazing authenticity for your own life. So it's a guide, it's a spiritual guide, as well as a great read. And at the end of each section, there's a journal section. So that's what this book is all about. And this is going to be so much food for your soul and fuel for your life. And I like that because it's like you have to dig deep and uncover all the hidden things. And while you're digging deep, that's where you see the gems. That's where you're mining. That's where you're finding the gold and all the precious things because all those things aren't found at the surface level. So if you see people who are digging for treasures, they go deep. If you see people who are mining, or fracking for oil and doing all that stuff, they dig deep. Because anything worth attaining, you really have to dig deep, y'all. You can't just stay at the surface level and expect for you to get results without putting in the work. So I love how KK prefaces that and how she also includes a 
writing component within the book where you could journal your personal truths and relay that to what she's speaking in the book because her story is now her testimony. And had it not been for the ugly things that she went through back then, how would she be the woman that she is today? And when I when I heard you say, oh, my son's about to be 30 next, I think you said next week. Yes. I was yeah. like, woo. She, uh, she looks good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you. When you were writing your book, did you have to face those ugly truths when you were reliving some of the things in your past? And while facing those ugly truths, did it just take you to a place where you thought you wouldn't have gone back to? Absolutely. So the onset of the book was because one of my children, my son, had gotten into some trouble during his senior year and all of his opportunities were taken from him. So here's a child that I have struggled with my entire parenthood journey and pivoting him, getting ready for him to go to college, getting ready for him to launch into a new him, a new life, enjoying college, enjoying brotherhood, and it all fell apart. So I had two choices. My mom would always say, you can sink or you could swim. So the book started as a painful unleashing of my emotions, unleashing my expectations and letting go of everything that I thought would happen in my life. And that's why the book is called Awakening Unleashed, because a lot of times we're on a path and we think that life is going to go exactly how we orchestrated it to go. But sometimes it's totally different. Sometimes it works out like we think it would in a season. But with my experience, life unfolds as God intends for it to unfold. And sometimes that's not easy. And sometimes we do things ourselves to jeopardize our futures as well. So with all these emotions, I had to pour it somewhere. And I've always been a journaler. I've always in church, I'm writing at events, I'm writing anywhere that I am. I keep a pencil and a journal. I'm always writing. So with all these emotions, I poured it into my book. And at first the book was not organized at all. So while, <laughs> while I was in school, I went back to school to become um, media, mass media, mass communications. And so during my journey at the University of South Florida, I learned how to edit my own book. And so I edited it and I took out about 100 pages. So now it's about 147 pages, but I had learned so much about editing that I took out all the things that didn't align and I learned some amazing things. So the book first started initially with pain and emotion. And that's how and you asked the question, when I looked at my life, was I able to walk through some of those things that I put, put in the book? Yes, I was actually living them at the moment. <laughs> and so many amazing things and life lessons came while I was writing this book. And they were such aha moments. I had testimonies in church about them. And that's how I knew I was on the right path with not only helping myself, but really helping the world to awaken and unleash in this book. Mm, that's beautiful because we heard about the pain, the emotion. Some people would say the bad and the ugly. And now that you got through that and you've gone through that, it didn't break you because you made it through. So you had your breakthrough. Um, now we've reached the point where you could talk about the goodness, the favor, the blessings, the success. And as you were speaking and you were talking about writing, I say it's so important to write down things that we want, we hope, and we desire to achieve because there is a staple scripture that says, write the vision and make it plain. Now, I want you to take us home to what your 
I have arrived moment is. And not just because you've arrived now, but you are still coming into KK Smith. You are still refining, redefining, and re-nurturing who you are. But now you have a glow, you have peace, you have openness. And I really want you to share that with the listeners because sometimes people see, you know, the bad and the ugly, but they fail to realize that the bad and the ugly is just temporary. That's not permanent. Yes. One thing I could share with you, and that's really has helped me throughout the pandemic and really helped me grow exponentially. So all my life dealing with trauma, um, coming from abuse as a child, homelessness, all these things that happened to me, it made me hide. It made me go back into a cocoon in any situation when I saw pain I began to hide more and more and what the pandemic did for me is it allowed me a space and a time to realize that you don't need to hide anything when God gives you an idea when God gives you fuel for your soul to show up in this world authentically, it's time to stop hiding. So if I never poured those emotions out into a book, into my platform, I would never be able to help anybody. So that is the biggest gem and the moment of peace and transparency. It has been a journey just to come out and show up as the real me, not trying to hide behind this. Okay, this went wrong but I want it to look like this. Okay, that went wrong, but I wish it would look like that. Just showing up as this happened and now I can move on and more importantly and incredibly, I could help more people with just showing up as me. That is my greatest, greatest life lesson um, in this season and moving forward because from this platform, from this book, I've been asked to speak, um, go to women's conferences, show up at um, colleges and just be me and just help someone else. So that is the greatest takeaway and the greatest joy in this season of my life. Ooh, that is amazing. And I just want to pause really quick right there with those gems that you dropped and really tell the listeners as well as the viewers, you don't have to put on all these masks. You don't have to put on these filters. You don't have to auto-tune your voice. You don't have to do what society is depicting as normal and the fit in crowd to show that you are worthy, to seek validation, to make yourself be and appear to be something that you're not. Because if you keep vying for the attention of the world, people and things who aren't attached to your lifelong destiny assignment and calling, then you are still going to be broken because you are looking for things that aren't even supposed to be with you on this journey. And hear me loud and clear when I say this, stop seeking people and things who aren't meant to be with you from birth all the way to lifelong. As seasons change, so must we as individuals. We must continue to evolve. And it's gonna be a time where you have to let go some people. You could love them, but you don't have to surround yourself with them. You could love them from a balcony. You could love them, but not be associated with them because you know why? You are traveling at a different pace. You're on a different wavelength. And it's no disregard to them. They may be an amazing person, but they just don't see the vision like you see the vision. And that's okay. So I just really wanted to interject that there. As KK was unveiling her truths, her authenticity, because because 
sometimes we just get so caught up in social media. We get caught up in our family, our friends. And before we know it, we're doing things that don't even really make us feel good. We're just doing it to be seen, to fit in and just say, you know what? I'm just going to rock with it. But then when you get at home in your quiet place, you feel so bad because you exerted energy that you should have kept for yourself, your brand, your vision, and your purpose. Yes. And I wanted to tell your listeners for my 40th birthday, I had, my husband had taken me on a cruise and all I wanted to do was sit with this book. And this book was called Return to Love. And when I read a book, I get one resounding truth from the book, the whole book. I just stick, you know, one resounding truth in my mind and pertaining to what you were saying, return to love this, this piece was so beautiful that she was explaining that God is always right there. And for me, I will add returning to your center because we're in a world of so much distraction. We're distracted by social media. We're saying, okay, should I look like this? Should I come out like this? Should I do this? Should I do this? But I would encourage your listeners, your viewers, just return to center because the center is where God is. And that's where your authenticity is. And that is where you can get your best life. It's not all on the exterior. It's in the center. It's where God is and he's going to lead you. And you don't have to do it like anybody else. You don't have to show up as anybody else. You have to show up with your own special, authentic life that God has ordained, especially for you. There is God in the center. That's what I want everyone to know. You can do anything, just return to your center, which is God. And that's the beauty about being an author because you're putting your truth out there. You're sharing your story and nobody could tell your story like you could tell your story. And that's why I wanted to talk about authorship, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there's people out here who are aspiring to be an author, but they never picked up the pen and the paper or they never picked up you know, their laptop or their phone. They have all these thoughts in their head, but why not put it down on that hard copy? Why not put it down on their phone? And the reason why I put phone in there is because not everyone may want to you know, hit it old school, writing right. with a pen and a paper. Right. Right. And for me, because I'm an author myself, and I wrote my entire book on my cell phone because I didn't have a laptop at the time. So it just goes to show that whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve it. But don't just have those thoughts and let the thoughts be prisoners to your mind because those thoughts are there for a reason. And you just have to try the spirit by the spirit. If they're good thoughts and you know those thoughts are going to plant seeds to produce a harvest, then put it out there and wait for your harvest. If those thoughts are bad, then check those thoughts and ask yourself, why am I thinking the way that I'm thinking? Why are these thoughts prefacing the surface? Is it something that I've let in my ear gate? Is it something that I've opened my eye gate to? Is it something that I was connected to that's leading me to feel this way? And check it. And like KK say, find that alignment and get back in one with yourself. Find that centeredness to keep you grounded and keep on moving. Yes, 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 yes. So, so come on, KK, let's let's keep this rolling. Uh, yes, that, that has been my greatest life lesson. And you were so right about pivoting towards people that are on the next level. Because sometimes people mean well, but they can't see your vision the way you can see your vision. And I used to hear that all the time growing and pivoting. So my my entrepreneurship journey is in the beauty industry. So standing behind the chair for so many years, I needed to come up with something that was near and dear to my heart. I had so many ideas and I could go in so many different directions, but I really wanted to help people awaken and unleash. And I was like, okay, how do I pivot towards this entrepreneurship journey? 
Well, it lied first in realizing how many gifts were inside of me. And I think a lot of people don't realize how many gifts are really inside of you. And sometimes we stay somewhere so long, it becomes familiar and we think, okay, that's all there is. Uh, you know, I have to work this job for 30, 40, 50 years, but God has put so much more in you. So first realizing that, and then secondly, aligning myself with people that did not, I want people to hear me real good with this, aligning myself with people that did not mind me having it. So many times we're around familiar people and they mind you having it. They are comparative. They might be jealous. They might be envious. They might be self-sabotaging themselves and you're trying to connect with them. And you're like, wait a minute, you don't even want me to have this dream. And when I began to become an author and, and speak on platforms, I could see people just leaving my life, leaving my life, leaving my life. And that I found out was called FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, the fear of missing out. And a lot of times I want people to know you can be around some heavy hitters. You could be around people that have way more than you. And it's okay because guess what? You're still learning. You're still in the realm of extraordinary. It's okay if someone wins and you're not winning in that season or you're winning in a different way. So it's so important to be around people that want you to have it. And God just really showed me that with so many things that started happening when I started climbing into my authenticity, into my journey. So I, I would really say that's a great takeaway for me, surrounding myself with like-minded entrepreneurs, not really getting rid of all my old friends, but really finding people that are on their journey are already there to places that you really want to go and heights you really want to climb. Yep, that's that's so, so, so true. And I like how you said not getting rid of your old friends, because sometimes those people who are old, we may be the ones that need to pour into them so they could see the light. But then right. if you're trying to pour into them and they're not receiving certain things, then that's when you could align. Is this friendship something worth holding on to? Right. Because you never want to hold on to people longer than you're supposed to. And it's right. vice versa. People let us go and we let people go. So right. it's, you know, it's a constant moving, moving train. Like, train. <laughs> yes. And so, go ahead. So I was going to ask you, as you say your last tidbit, I want you to give some people some tips on authorship, whether it's publishing or self-publishing, whether it's how to format your book, how to edit, or anything that you feel compelled that will help them jumpstart their next level. But I'll let you finish your last statement. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I want to say about friendship is that it's so important to keep those connections in friendship because you want people to understand it is possible. And working with women for so long, I could hear people saying, oh, but you don't know how she got it. And I will always abruptly interrupt and say, no, that's not the mindset. The mindset is you could see the blessings are here because everyone could have it. A lot of times people can't receive success without some diminishment on the success. Oh, but you don't know how they got it. Oh, but but guess what? Can't you, can you receive that they got it because they kept working hard and kept being authentic and kept believing that their dream would come true? So we don't need to get rid of our friends. We just kind of need to bring those mindsets up so they can believe like we believe because I don't believe in just getting rid of people. You know, a lot of people say, Oh, I'm here now, you know, now you got to train, change your circle and all these posts of that. But what about getting people to a mindset that they can believe as well themselves and having them to believe you don't have to be so intimidated because you, you could have this as well. If you're willing to come along and willing to pivot your mindset into a new way of thinking 
that everybody, everybody could come along. And so the tip that I would give you for authorship is this, be very clear on what you want to write about. Um, for me, the genre was so important because I didn't want to leave my spirituality behind um, because God has been a part of my entire life since I've been born. Um, you know, just speaking with God, my quiet time. So I, I didn't want to leave that out, but also I wanted to reach a mass of people. So I didn't want to leave people out that were not believers right now. And neither did I want to shove religion down people's throat. So I would say, be very clear on your genre and who you're talking to in your book. Now, you, a lot of people will pick up your book, but you have to be clear on who is this book for and organizing your book in that structure, whether it's fiction, whether it's self-help, whether it's um, mystery, whatever it is, just be very clear on organizing your content. Those are great tips. And as we wind down, KK, I want you to tell the listeners as well as the viewers the, your name, where you're located again, and how they could connect with you on social media. Okay, I am KK Smith. Um, on social media is KK Smith Media. That is my business page. You can connect with me there. Um, and also on Instagram, uh, KK Smith Media. I am a one-on-one -on -one coach, as well as I have an amazing offer for anyone that's trying to get started as an author. And I will leave the links with Genesis, but you can connect with me on social media, reach out to me, email me at kksmithmedia.com um, if you have any questions on authorship or business or entrepreneurship. Once again, you heard it here on Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp with KK Smith as my lovely guest. We talked about authorship today, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And until we chat next time, peace, love, and blessings. Go out and be great. Thank you for having me, Genesis. My pleasure. Thank you for being a guest.